Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through the top 10 terminal commands for absolute beginners. These are the commands that every user needs to know in order to start getting around the system and start interacting with it from the terminal. So let's jump in right away. And if you're new and stopping by to watch this video today, please make sure to go ahead and subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. All right, and command number one, CD. CD stands for change directory and it allows you to go ahead and navigate through the file system in your terminal. It's very important to know as a beginner or else you can't get around the system. So if I wanted to go ahead and change over to another directory, I can simply type in CD forward slash. And if I press tab a couple times, I get all my options wherever I'm currently at. So if I wanted to change, let's say to the ETC directory, I can just type in ETC and press enter. And now I'm in the ETC directory. You can also go back one directory by simply typing CD and then pressing dot dot. You can also use a few shortcuts with CD, such as CD with the tilde, that leads you to the home directory, as well as CD with one forward slash, that takes you back all the way to the root directory, which is the very beginning of the file system. Command number two, ls. ls allows you to go ahead and list out the contents of the current directory. So if you type in ls and you press enter, you'll see everything that's in the current directory where you're currently located. So if you use the previous command in order to go ahead and go through the system, you can use ls to display all the potential paths that you can go to in your current working directory. So after typing in ls and pressing enter, you can see that I have multiple different directories available to me in blue, and then a couple files available to me in white, at least in this distribution of Linux. LS, of course, is another important command to know. That way you can check and see throughout the system what you currently have access to. If you type in LS-A, that will list all the contents of the current directory. Now, what's the difference between the two? Well, LSA allows you to see hidden files as well. So you can see now I have access to bash history, bash RC, and a few other hidden files. Anything with a dot means it's hidden. And you can even tell that we have a few hidden folders. Another neat one to know is ls-al. This will print a list of all the files and directories that are available in the current working directory. And it'll tell you a bit more information about every file and directory, such as permissions, the current user who owns the directory or file, how big it is, and when it was created. All right, now that you know how to go ahead and change directories and list the contents, let's learn about command number three, mkdir. mkdir, or short for make directory, will create a new directory for you in the current working directory. All you have to do is type in mkdir and then follow that up with the name of the directory you want to create. So I'm just going to call this new directory. And if I press enter and display the contents of this directory, you'll see that we have a new directory created that we can now use and store files in. MKDIR is very easy to use, but is important so you can go ahead and organize your files throughout the file system from terminal. All right, and if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit that like button. It helps support the channel and bring new users to the channel, so it really does help me out. All right, command number four, touch. Touch allows you to go ahead and create a new file in the current working directory. And this one's simple to use too. All you have to do is type in touch, followed by a space, and then the name of the file that you want to create. You can also put extensions in if you want. So if I wanted to make a new pi script, I can simply do it by doing new.py. Of course, you can name it whatever you want, and you press enter. Let's go ahead and look and see if that file was created. As you can see, we have new.py. Touch is a great and easy way to go ahead and create files. Now you can't edit anything with, but make sure you go ahead and look for some text editors that you can use in terminals such as Nano or Vim. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below to some of my videos on how to use Nano or Vim. But just for fun, let's go ahead and create one more file. So this one, I'm just going to go ahead and call it new file without an extension. If I do that and I do ls, one of the previous commands we learned, you can see that I now have new file. If I do ls-al, we can see that new file belongs to Savvy Nick because that's the current user I'm using in order to create this file. Command number five, pwd. pwd stands for print working directory. This allows you to go ahead and view what the current directory that you're in and what the path to that directory is with respect to the root directory. So if you type pwd, you can see from root, we are in home, 
and then Savvy Nick. So if I wanted to go ahead and travel back to this, I can do CD, Home, Savvy Nick, and I'll be in the exact same location that I'm at right now. But if you ever get lost, PWD is a great command to know. That way you can find out where you're currently at. Sometimes when you get down the rabbit hole too much, it can be easy to lose track of where you're at. Just remember PWD. Command number six, cat. Yes, just like the animal, cat is a command that allows you to display the contents of a file in the terminal. Of course, this is without any editing capability, but it's a simple and great way to view a file quickly. So if we type cat and then some file name, so let's just use the new file that we created earlier. Of course, nothing shows up because we didn't actually put anything in that new file. So we're going to have to search for something that exists on the system. We can do this because we already know change directory. I know I got a file hanging out somewhere here. So let me just go to my scripts and then inside my scripts, I have a clean.bin.sh file that we can go ahead and look at the contents of. So if we do that and we just type in cat space, the file name that we want to access, you can see now that all the contents were printed to the screen. So it's a simple script that I wrote before and that's all the contents of this file. Now it is a little bit of a pain in order to use cat. If you have a file with a lot of information in it, what you can do is do cat and specify that file name again and use the pipe followed by another command called less. We won't talk about less too much, but just know that it allows for the contents to be displayed in something that you can actually use the up and down arrows to go ahead and scroll through the entire file. Instead of having to scroll back up with your mouse, you can use the up and down arrow. If you want to just end it, you can press enter when you get to end or just Q at any time to get out. Command number seven, MV. MV allows you to go ahead and move files. This is important to know in case you want to change the name of a file. This is a great way to do it. So let's say I wanted to change that new file that I created earlier to some kind of a new file name. Well, I can do this by simply typing move followed by whatever file I want to move. And then I specify where I want to move the file to and what the name of the file is going to be. You can always keep it the same, of course, but for demonstration pur purposes, I'm going to keep it in the exact same location, but I'm just going to change the name. I can do this by, by just putting the new name now and I'm calling it moved file. After you press enter, we'll go ahead and search and see what happened here. And now you can see that new file doesn't exist anywhere in the contents of this current directory but moved file does. All right, so one other thing you can do, of course, is move to a different directory. So let's say I wanted to go ahead and move the moved file into another directory. Well, I can do this. So I'm going to go ahead and use the scripts directory, and I can do that by typing scripts followed by a forward slash. So that means inside this directory, and I'm just going to reuse the same name and call it moved file. If I press enter, there were no errors. And now if we check inside of scripts, we should have moved file. And right now I'm in the scripts directory. And of course I have the moved file. Of course, I'm only showing you the basics of all of these commands here. Make sure to go ahead and look them up or use the man command, which is a way to go ahead and generate the manuals for all of these commands. I also have a video on that. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below for that as well. That way you can learn a lot more about these commands because they're all very powerful commands with many different arguments to them that help you use them in advanced cases. Command number eight, CP. CP stands for copy and it's much like the move command, but now you can create copies of files. So let's say in that scripts directory, the moved file that I had, I wanted to go ahead and copy it into the current location. Well, I can either denote that by doing a dot followed by a forward slash and then type in moved file or whatever other name I want to copy the move file to. So just to tell the difference, I'm just gonna call this moved file two. So what I did is we're going to copy from scripts, a file called moved file here to move file two. So in the current working directory, we're gonna name it moved file two and just make a copy. Let's go ahead and do that. And then if I do LS, a previous command that we learned, we'll see that we now have moved file two in the current working directory as well as if I list out the contents of scripts, you can see that we have moved file. Copy is a great way to go ahead and copy files and even folders across the system in a very fast and efficient way. 
I'll go ahead and let you look up the copy command some more in order to figure out how to copy a directory and its contents across the system. I'll give you a hint, it involves using an extra switch and that's just one of those advanced features that can be given to the command, command number nine, RM. RM stands for remove. And since we've learned how to go ahead and create files, move them around and even copy them, we need to also know how to go ahead and remove a file. So this is important and I believe it needs to be on the top 10. So in order to use RM, you can either use it on a file or directory. Now be careful if you specify directory, it will delete all the contents and that directory itself. So if I wanted to go ahead and remove a file, I can do so. So let's just go ahead and get rid of that moved file too in the current location. And all I have to type is remove, and as long as it's a file, the file name. After I press enter, we'll go ahead and take a look at the current directory and moved file two is nowhere to be found anymore. You can also remove a directory. So we created a new directory before, so let's go ahead and do that. In order to do that, we just have to do rm again, space. We have to provide an extra argument, which is the dash r for recursively remove. And then we'll type in new directory and press enter. If we get no complaints, we know we did it right. And let's go ahead and verify that. As you can see up here, we had new directory and down here, new directory doesn't exist anymore. Now you know how to go ahead and remove your files and your folders. And this is another important command to know. Command number 10, sudo. Sudo is an important command that allows you to go ahead and elevate the privileges of your current user and or even log into another user. We'll talk about two ways of using this command here. And after learning all those other commands, if you were trying to access a file that belongs to the system, it might not let you do some of the commands that we mentioned before, such as copying or moving or even removing because it requires elevated privileges. Well, sudo allows you to do just that. And since we've learned all those previous commands, I think you might be ready to go ahead and use some administrative privileges here in Linux. So if we type sudo followed by some command, so such as CP, now we are requesting elevated privileges in order to use the command copy CP and can now access important files and folders with permissions that require elevated privileges. So if we do sudo copy, and then of course, you're going to copy some file or folder to another location. So you would type in something like some file, and then of course, some location followed by some file. Now, if we type that in and we press enter, I'm being asked for a password. And of course, this is the administrative password for the current user that we're using. So long as your user belongs to the sudoers file, meaning your user has the ability to elevate their privileges. I'm not going to type in my password right now, but just know you will be asked for that password in order to go ahead and elevate your privileges. The other way we can use sudo is sudo and then type in su behind it with the space in the middle. This will also allow us to elevate our privileges, but not only will those privileges be elevated, but we will remain logged in with elevated privileges. So now I can type in my password and you can see the user has changed here. It's become root instead of savvy Nick. And now we're actually issuing commands as the root user. Just be careful with all that power because now you pretty much have access to any and all of the system. You can change files, delete anything you want, which can also wreak havoc on the system. But now you have great powers, so use them wisely. Well, that's it for the top 10 Linux terminal commands for absolute beginners here. Did you find any commands that you would have liked me to add in? please go ahead and post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to post any other commands that you might think are real useful for beginner users. I of course had to draw the line somewhere and these are just the top 10 that I thought would be very useful for beginner users using the Linux terminal. Of course, make sure to go ahead and subscribe below and hit that notification bell for future Linux and programming videos. Also make sure to go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help me out. Catch me in a great community on Discord. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below. Thanks for watching today and I'll catch you in the next one.